I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Sing out now Oh victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With his redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew him And all my love is due him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood Now in the last I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the songs of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood great singing well, good afternoon and welcome. I am delighted that you are here this evening because it gives me the opportunity to open God's Word and share with you truths that will, if you listen and if you apply them, will help your life. We've been studying the book of Proverbs and last week we began a passage where it talks about giving you life and giving you health. And who doesn't want that? But we weren't able to finish it, so tonight we're going to finish that. And if you'll listen, it will help you. And if you think about this as we get into this message, if you think about it, the people you know that are struggling the most are the people that are not applying what I'm going to be sharing with you this evening. And the people that are applying what I'm going to be sharing with you this evening their lives are up here, and everybody else's is down here. Yours may be down here right now, but we want to get you up here. And you hear and you heed the word of God, and it gets you from here to here. So I am just delighted you are here tonight. This is time well spent. Couldn't be doing anything better anywhere else. So thank you for being here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get started tonight. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, it is a privilege to stand before these good folks this afternoon or this evening. And Lord, to open your word to a portion of Proverbs, it gives us very clear and detailed instructions, Lord, on how we might have life and how we might have health. And if we will listen, and if we will change our lives accordingly, our lives can change for the better. Because you love us, Lord. And you want us to have better lives. So be with us now. Bless our time together this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you can be seated. Some announcements real quick here. There will be a meal. There will be a meal served between services this Sunday. Also, we are still looking for volunteers that will just take it upon themselves to help with the cleanup after these meals when they are provided. If you could see my wife about that. Also... Uh, we have we have starting up here in September 7th and 8th a fall ladies Bible study and you can choose Wednesday morning or Thursday evening it's the same Bible study 
or you can mismatch them if you'd like to. There's a sign-up sheet and information is available on the sign-up table in the foyer. I will remind you, you will need to purchase your own books and information for that is out there. Ladies, let me encourage you to do this. I mean, the Bible says that in the last times we need more of God's word, not less. And this will be time well spent. And this is particularly ladies ministering to ladies. And that's a very special and important ministry. So I hope you'll take advantage of this Bible study. If you have any questions, you can see my wife, Sharon, or you can see Vicki Coslow. They can help you with that. Also, next week, next Wednesday night, a week from tonight, we will be meeting back in the ministry center. The reason being is the young people are going to be having a program um, the following Wednesday. So next Wednesday, they need to have in here to rehearse their kids' choir program for the following Wednesday. So next Wednesday night, if you want to park around back to uh, get into the ministry center, we'll be meeting back there. And those of you that are watching online, uh, we're not going to be online that night. I'm sorry, but uh, that's just, there's, there's no other way around that. So um, next Wednesday night, we'll be meeting back in the ministry center. Truth Trackers is starting up in, in September, on September the 7th, Wednesday the 7th. That's ages 3 to 6th grade. You want to be sure, uh, again, these young people, you know, these are wicked times we're in, and they need more of the Word of God in them. That's the antidote to all the temptations around them. So sign your kids up for Truth Trackers. If you have neighbor, neighbor kids, you know, and you could bring them, sign those neighbor kids up and bring them and make that a ministry. And then uh, the prime time berry farm, the prime timers, those are the retirees, are going to be going to the berry and flower farm in um, uh, bah, 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 Fairview uh, it, on Saturday the 20th. There's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. A anything to add to that, Sandy? She's heading that up. Okay, so and if you have any questions, you can see Sandy. Uh, we like to keep you up to date on our missionaries, particularly on Wednesday nights. Uh, Cheryl and Tim Chapman are missionaries that we support uh, in Peru and um, got this update from them. It says, our first official service with, with Iglesia Bautista Garcia was back on May 1st of 2016. Six years later, Again, on May 1st, we celebrated with a special service of gratitude to God for what he had done in raising up a church in the center city of Lima. We began the day with a breakfast for the entire congregation. In the main service, we took some time to recount the story of how the Lord has led us in planting of this church. Then we finished the day with eight baptisms, and that is fantastic. Uh, Cheryl and Tim, they're, they're really good folks been serving there now for a number of years down in Peru. All righty, prayer sheets. Let me give you these updates. And, and first and, and, and foremost, uh, you, you received word this week that Brother Ted Mincy lost his son, a, a variety of health issues over the past several years. And keep Brother Ted, not a finer man than Ted Mincy, and keep him and his family in your prayers. Uh, Jackie Turner, as you know, is in the nursing home there in Fairview for rehab. Sharon and I went by and saw her yesterday, and um, I even told her this. I said, you look and sound better than I was expecting, and uh, Jackie looked good, and she, and she sounded good. Uh, a bit confused about a few things, but that's okay. But, you know, she really looked good and she sounded good. She was in good spirit. She was very complimentary of the care that she was receiving there at the nursing home. Um, she just has that sweet spirit about her. But as you might expect, she is eager to, uh, to get out. And I think they're trying to build up her strength and make it possible for her to be able to get out on her own. So remember, Jackie, <clears throat> in your prayers... Jim Houghton, as you know, he fell and injured himself uh, a few weeks ago and uh, was pretty painful injuries that he was suffering. And those are doing better until today. <laughs> and I called him earlier this afternoon. I tend to call folks on Wednesday afternoons to check on them to give you an accurate and up-to-the-minute update. So I called Jim 
And um, I was joking with him. I said, Jim, I called you. You know, your church family, we're going bowling tonight. Want to go? He said, I'm in no condition to go bowling. I said, well, are you doing better from your injury of a few weeks ago? He said, from that I'm doing better, but not from my injury today. I said, what happened? He said, well, he said, I've been dizzy. And he said, I didn't want to fall. So do you remember what it was he was attempting to do? I, Sharon, you talked to him. Well, no, he was, he, was, he was on the floor. He said, I had to go over. He was going to turn something on, I, I, I think. I could be wrong. Or turn something off, a fan, a light, something. I think it was a fan. And he said, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not going to risk anything. He said, I'm just going to crawl over there on my hands and knees. And as he was crawling over there on his hands and knees, he got dizzy again. And one of his hands went out from under him and, ouch, hit his head on the fireplace hearth. So had to go and get some stitches in that. But, you know, uh, Jim was in, in good spirits about that. So um, he said overall he's doing better from his other injury. And he was able even to, to laugh a little bit about it today. But pray for him. Uh, Keith Yost, um, he's still having issues with his hemoglobin, still having kidney function issues. Uh, it's so important that we remember these folks in prayer. And these folks, when I call them, they ask for your prayers. And uh, it's so important that we pray for them. And uh, Keith said to tell you folks, you know, they haven't been here since COVID started. So some of you don't even know them. Uh, but uh, they live down in West Branch. But he did say uh, to share with you his love and his appreciation. Oh, and Jackie was also grateful for all the cards that she has received. Uh, Jim Lindenbaum. Uh, Jim it has come down with, I, if I gave you the name of it, I don't think you'd know it. I mean, I can't pronounce it. But anyway, he's sick. He's, he's not well. Tired, upset stomach, headaches, uh, can have severe fatigue. Uh, I think, including some, he deals with dizziness, does he not? Some dizziness and what have you. And uh, not so sure what's going on, but it's been pretty debilitating for him. So pray for him. Uh, Kim Dowling said, um, Thankful for uh, issues concerning her sister Kate. Her, her bleeding problem seems to be resolved. That is good news. Uh, Jack and Nancy Evans are officially, it, it's, I'm happy for them, sad for us. You know, she, she sent Sharon a note that they're officially moved in downstate. Uh, they will always, though, be in our hearts and in our prayers. And I, I failed to mention... Uh, Sunday, uh, Sharon and I went to Brother Rick Russ's funeral this past Friday. We support, we have supported him. I've known him for a number of years as a friend. We've supported him recently uh, as being a part of the Baptist Church Planting Ministries. He came down with cancer, only 57 years old, hit him hard, and he went home to be with the Lord. Sharon and I went down to the funeral uh, this past Friday, and uh, I, I want to commend Pastor Jason Georges and uh, the people at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Uh, it, it was just an excellent, excellent funeral. Well done, right spirit. And I even sent the pastor a note the next day commending him and their church on just a, an outstanding uh, funeral. And so remember his wife, Tammy, just a sweet, soft spoken lady. Remember her and uh, He's, they've got three children, a son and two daughters, and I think like seven or eight grandchildren. Uh, remember them in uh, your prayers. All righty, now we want to, uh, oh, we've also got these here. Denny and Sharon Gill, uh, Gillis, four unspoken requests, and they ask prayer for Trevor for college and financial needs as it relates to him going back to Christian college. Uh, <clears throat> Kevin and Heather asked prayer for Steve Wiggins, home on hospice for terminal cancer. Uh, pray for pain relief. So pray for Steve Wiggins. Um, Sharon Durfee with nine unspoken requests. And um, Bonnie Carpenter asked prayer for their neighbor, Jerry Carpenter, wearing a heart monitor and will be scheduled for a heart cath 
soon. So pray for uh, Jerry Carpenter. All righty. Candace, you got the mic? All right. She has the mic because now on Wednesday nights we have blessings and answers to prayer. And we'd like to hear from you any blessings or answers to prayer you have. I'll, I'll start it off by saying uh, we got our new church uh, commercial big three-door refrigerator today. And it is back in the kitchen. It is not, you know, it's not plugged in yet because the instructions said once you put it in place, I don't know why, but it says let it wait 24 hours. So it's not up and operational but it's a nice addition to the ministry here. I especially, <clears throat> I especially want to thank uh, Dustin and his assistant, Tim, for it, it was a challenge. I mean, it's a big unit. The first challenge was when the driver called and said, I'll be there in 30 minutes. I said, okay, great, we're here, ready for you. He says, but I can't pull in. I, I said, what do you mean you can't pull in? And he, and I forgot about this. And it's the same driver that was here delivering something, I don't know, a number of years ago. And he said, I can't get under the power lines. And I remember, okay. So I'm thinking, well, we got to get, it's, it's a big unit and it, it's 700 pounds. So anyway, we got it off of that, hooked it up to, what, what do you call that thing? A dolly, a kind of a power dolly. And we drug it all the way up here to, to the building. Well, now it's sitting on a big pallet. Now you got to get it off the pallet to get it into the building. And after a lot of effort and work and uh, Dustin being creative, uh, we were able to get it off the pallet and then we get into the building. But now it won't fit through the interior opening going into the gym. So we had, we, I say we, uh, Dustin and, and, and Tim had to take, he's got six big casters on the bottom of it. So they had to remove all six casters and then use dollies on each end to sneak it under that entrance. Then um, getting it into the kitchen, had to take the big heavy kitchen door off, got it in there, and then reassembled the, um, the casters on the bottom of it. That wasn't easy, getting it up high enough, propping boards underneath it. Anyway, it was quite a trip, but it's in there, and Dustin, we just now hope it works. <laughs> So, but uh, it, it's a nice, it's important and with what we do around here. That's an important piece of equipment and it contributes greatly to ongoing ministry. So thank you for your giving. Nobody gave it to us. The, other, the government didn't issue it to us. It is there because you give. Without you giving, it's not there. And you and I and others and the cause of Christ will benefit from it. So that was a big blast. We had waited eight months. We'd been dealing with the warehouse here in town and John has been great with us and, and he's more frustrated, but we waited like eight months on his supplier. And after a while he told me, he said, pastor, you, you probably ought to go somewhere else. He said, I can't tell you when this thing is going to come in. And, um, and he loaned us and I want to give John credit there at the warehouse here in town. He loaned us a, a fridge to use back there. And um, I told him, I said, well, John, he said, just call me when you get your new one. And he says, I'll come get the, the little one we loaned you. I said, well, look, we'll pay you for it. We, we owe you something for, I mean, we've used it for six, seven months or whatever. And uh, no, he's a good guy. He said, no, no, you don't owe us anything. He said, happy to help. And I said, well, I appreciate that. But uh, we were able to find another one, order it, and it got here in about three weeks so it's back there that is a blessing and uh, uh, we will benefit from it all righty uh, that's my blessing answer to prayer somebody else this afternoon this evening all righty we'll start right here with Ted <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for uh, their well wishes their prayers this has been a trying time but I thank everybody for their help. You want me to find her fella than Ted Menzi. All righty. I saw another hand back here, Dakota. Oh, and it's good to have Alice for later with us here. Haven't, you've been gone a while, ended up moving down to Texas, but I understand she's back up in Michigan now and here. 
uh, for the big um, uh, Friday and Saturday garage sale back in the back. So uh, drop by, there's all sorts of wonderful treasures back there and you'll wanna go by and take a look at it. All right, Dakota. So as most of you uh, know, uh, we just got done this past week with our sixth week of camp. And uh, throughout the summer, we had a total of 100 and about 144 uh, kids have either reassurance or salvation. Amen. So. Amen. Great work. We appreciate you guys and your hard work here at Camp Kobiak. All righty, Alice. I want to thank the Lord for the prayers of this church and, and the people here that have stood behind me through the long journey that I've been through. Pastor Ben will be with the Lord five years, September the 8th. Doesn't seem possible, but that's how Five it years? Been. Five years, September wow. the 8th. And <clears throat> all of our things were in storage. Many of our things were in storage and have been for five years. <laughs> and I want to thank Ada and uh, Frank and Joanne Chair and those of you that have, uh, Howard and Laura, um, for helping me to get through some of this stuff and bring some of it here to the church to take care of it. We're part way through the, <laughs> through the storage unit, but still have a lot to go. But I just want to praise the Lord for his goodness to me in these past five years and watching over me and, and providing for me. And I just praise him tonight. Praise the Lord for this church and for the church I attended in Texas. It was a, a very blessing to me as well. But, uh, there's nothing like your home church. It's so wonderful to be back, and I thank you for your prayers. <coughs> well, good to have you here. All right, somebody else. Mrs. Friend. I'm going to be blessed to be a great-grandma twice this coming year. A great-grandma twice this year, or this coming year? All righty, well, congratulations, Mrs. Friend. Okay, somebody else. All righty, back in the back. Yvonne? I have a prayer request for my sister-in-law, Judy. For who? Judy, my sister-in-law. She's having a cornea transplant on the 30th of this month. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? All the way over here, Angie. Is this about the wedding? She just married off her oldest daughter. Go ahead. Yes, you stole my thunder. Um, so the wedding is over, and it was in Missouri. It went smoothly, and we had safety traveling there and home and all around the uh, area. It was very rural like here, so we did a lot of traveling. Um, all of our guests and people that came from the south, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas um, made it safely. And it was a wonderful time catching up very quickly with my mom and dad, sisters, um, and sister-in-law. I had a couple close friends that are like family that came up from Texas. So it was just a real blessing to see them. Makes us miss it, makes me miss them more sometimes, but it's a joy to see them again because they're like family. And Kirsten and Luke are doing well. They spent a week in Colorado and they're back to the daily grind, getting back into work in that now and settling in. Um, trying to get moved into a little trailer. And so I'm just thankful for how that went, and I thought the service was very um, reverent and worshipful, so very thankful for that, the way it came together. And um, also thankful that my two kids, Beth and Ty, got to go to camp for the first time ever. So um, very thankful for them being allowed to that opportunity, and I know the church probably funded some of that, so I just wanted to say thank you for the way they met that need, and the kids were able to go, so we appreciate that. Okay, somebody else? Anybody else? All right, all the way over. We'll let Brother Mike be the last one. I just want to say praise the Lord. My wife's here tonight. Amen. Um, she, she still is having um, some procedures done. Um, just a quick update. Um, she does have a, a larger stone in her kidney. Um, so we're still going through some procedures to see if uh, we can break it up type thing and then go from there. Um, but uh, we did get a lot of good information from this process. Um, 
the doctor was very informative on you know some of the different things and put some of our fears to rest on some of the areas that we were concerned about. Um, so her kidneys are healthy and things like that. Um, so we're, we're you know just taking it one step at a time with the process. Um, but I am thank the Lord that uh, she's at least feeling better and able to be you know able to do some of the things she wants to get done so she's a very busy person as some people would know having seven kids and her being just sitting in her bed not able to move a lot was literally driving her insane so <laughs> and when mama's not happy the rest of the house isn't happy either so um it was it was uh it was a tough time and some uh, uh, concepts but the lord is good and he just took care of everything and, and helped everything go smooth on another note um it's, it was a huge blessing uh with the teens um, having them at camp, Ty and everybody that was able to go, it was, it was literally such a wonderful blessing um, to be able to hear the stories, not just from the teens, but also from the, the folks at the camp as well. Um, so it was, it was really just a wonderful blessing to hear all the, the different responses and different things that, that were going on. Um, and there was some assur assurance of salvation uh, with uh, one of our teens, um, which was a huge blessing. And so it's, it's exciting to see God moving in the hearts of our teenagers um, and the things that are going on. And I'm excited for their future uh, here at Mayo Baptist with everything that's uh, conspiring. So it's, it's just a wonderful blessing to be a part of this ministry. Amen. And I appreciate Brother Mike. Uh, he did all the legwork to make it possible for the teens to go to camp. A lot of paperwork, a lot of things you got to find out and get squared away. And Mike, I appreciate you doing that. A lot of behind the scene work that people don't even know, but Mike did it and made it happen. And I'm grateful to him for that. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for answered prayer. And thank you, Lord, that we can come to you for prayer. And Lord, I am grateful that Jack and Nancy have been able to move successfully into their new home downstate pray that you'd be with them and watch over them lord and meet their needs lord i'm grateful that when we saw jackie uh, yesterday lord I, we're, i'm grateful that she looked and sounded so good help her to improve lord she wants to go home help her to go home soon uh, we're grateful for kim dowling's report uh, concerning her sister kate that she's doing better lord we do Though continue to pray for Ted Menzi, be with him and comfort him and give him strength, Lord, in the, in the days, weeks, and months to come. Pray that you'd be with Jim Houghton, grateful that uh, the injury today wasn't any worse than it was. Help him to a full and speedy recovery with Keith Yost, Lord. Encourage him, give the doctors wisdom in dealing with him, as well as with Jim Lindenbaum, Lord. Be with that good man, Lord, a variety of health issues going on there. Just pray that uh, you'd get, get, him, get him some help, Lord, and he'd be able to overcome and, and move through that. We pray for Yvonne's sister-in-law, that you would be with, with her as well. We pray for Jerry Carpenter uh, with a heart monitor, that everything would go well with him and his future heart needs. We pray for Sharon Durfee, her nine unspoken requests. Pray for Steve Wiggins, Lord, and just pray that your perfect will be done there and peace and guidance be given to that family. Pray for Denny and Sharon for the four unspoken requests. And Lord, for Trevor, that his needs would be met as far as uh, returning to college. We thank you for the Chapmans, Lord, there in Peru and other missionaries around the world. Pray that you'd watch over them and meet their, their needs. Lord, help us as a, as, a, as a church. Help us, Lord, to, to be salt and light here in this community. And Lord, I, I pray for our military. I thank you for them. I pray that you'd protect them. And Lord, for our nation, we need revival in our land. Lord, I pray that you would confound, confuse, and defeat uh, those that would lead us down a, a path of, of ungodliness, Lord. And those that would lead our country well, I pray your blessings upon them. And I pray for revival in our land. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would bless the preaching of your word to follow. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Let's stand, please. Brother Bruce is going to come lead us in one more song.
Yeah, because we got the victory, we can stand up and sing. What a day that will be, amen. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the skies. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Sing out now. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I'll look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day, that will be now in the last There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I'll look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. And you can be seated. And we are studying in the book of Proverbs. And I, I am so excited. Are the pages going to turn? There they go. I just love it. That's the reason I, I cut it in two so I could just see the pages turn. I don't know how I did that, but it, it happened, and I'm happy for that. We are looking tonight at instructions for a whole and healthy life. Instructions for a whole and healthy life. Do you know... I was just standing up here thinking as we were singing, how many people are experiencing so many problems, so many difficulties, which not only is hurting themselves, but hurting others unnecessarily. It's not necessary. If you would but listen to your Creator, He loves you. And he knows that this is a difficult, sin-cursed world. But he knows that you are his child living in a sin-cursed world. So he gives instructions. Now, he doesn't make you follow them. You have a choice. Now, if you choose not to... This thing is not fitting on my ear properly. There. If you will, he's going to give you instructions tonight. I mean, that's my blessing. Tonight, the best thing I can do for you is to get God's Word into your heart and lived out in your life. And it will benefit you. I mean, go out those doors, go out into the laboratory of life, and follow the people that are heeding what I'm sharing with you tonight and see how much they're blessed even in this sin-cursed world. They're not problem-free. But they don't have nearly the problems that the derelicts and so many other people have, the drug, the drug people, the promiscuous people. They don't have near those problems. And those people don't have to have those problems. What's the difference? One chooses to trust God and His Word and then do their part, and the others are just arrogant, and foolish, and susceptible to the temptations around them, and they pay dearly. There is a better way. Let, let's skip down. We're, we're going to skip through some of these, and I'll help you out there, Velvet, to, to number three, where we read the, the passage. So here's a passage. We, we've been studying Proverbs. 
And we don't, we're doing some word studies, but we're doing some passages as well. Tonight we're looking at a passage. Let's look at this passage. Here are the instructions. Will you please be smart enough to understand that this is right? Please be wise enough to listen. Please have character enough to make whatever changes are necessary in your life so you're not making those same mistakes time and time again, hurting yourself and hurting others. Here's the passage. Here's the instructions. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. <clears throat> Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So the writer of Proverbs is saying, this is important. Listen to what I am about to tell you. And then he says, why? For they are, what I'm about to tell you, they are life unto those that find them. Life, I mean, prosperity, blessings, wholesomeness, goodness. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. This will help you live a healthy life as well. So he says, listen to what I'm about to tell you, because I'm about to tell you that which will give you the blessings of life and will give you health. And here's what he tells them. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The people you know that are destitute, that are in the grip of Satan, that are leading such hor hor horrific lives, I guarantee you they're not keeping their hearts. Not keeping them at all. Don't, don't, they don't even think about it. They don't even know this verse, much less apply it. And then he says, put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Those same people? Think about the most troubled people you know. Th think about maybe a neighbor that's burdened over a son or a father or whatever, just living a horribly reprobate life and they are miserable. I guarantee you they haven't put away a froward mouth. Then he says this, Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Again, they don't know anything about that. And then lastly, he says, number four, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Now let's sk skip ahead, Velvet, to slide number 12. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. Again, he says, and I want to emphasize it, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Let them uh, Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. God wants you to have life. He, don't want you to be, he doesn't want you to be surrounded by death in any form. So many people see the death of their dream, the death of their marriage, the death of their goal for their children. No, He wants you to have life. And He's not holding out before you something that is unattainable. That would be cruel. This is clearly attainable. Doesn't require a certain education. Doesn't require a, 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 a certain income. This is to everyone. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. And he gives us in that passage again four things you need to do. Will you please start doing them if you aren't already? The first thing, number 14, Velvet. Guard your heart carefully, he says. Because this is where your desires and affections originate. He says in verse number 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
if you don't guard or protect your heart, you could develop desires and affections for things in this world that will pull you away from God and the hard life that comes with that. So he says, keep thy heart with all diligence. In other words, be careful what you expose yourself to. Most people out there today, they have no filter. Uh, Al Mohler said, we are living in, in, in a day and age of moral, moral insanity is the word he used. I'm reading a book by him. We live in a day and age of moral insanity. Where the average person, the average teenager, there is no filter, there's no guarding anything. I mean, just, what are my friends doing? That's what I'm going to do. What, what are the movie stars doing? That's what is cool, that's what I want to do. What are the pop stars doing, the rock stars doing, the athletes doing? And there is no guarding of the heart whatsoever. How many people will go down to the bar room on Friday night? They're not guarding their heart. What are you exposing yourself to down there? What possible good could come in spending a, an evening in a bar room? What possible good? What possible good is it reading the wrong kinds of material, listening to the wrong music? Are you guarding your heart? If you just listen to whatever makes you feel good, read whatever makes you feel good, watch whatever makes you feel good, that is foolish. You, need to, you have to guard your heart. Everybody else you know that went down that troubled path did so, at least in part, because they violated point number one. They're not guarding their hearts. Demas was drawn away. 2 Timothy 4, 9, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, Paul writes to Timothy. For Demas hath forsaken me, have, have, hath forsaken me having loved this present world, and is departed. He, there's something that he was exposed to in this present world that drew his heart away. He did not guard his heart. You and I have to guard our heart. Remember, we're, we're number one on, on Satan's uh, enemy list. I mean, he, he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your children. We don't want to be like Demas. Something drew him away. He let something into his heart. He, he did not have the wisdom or the discernment to say, no, I'm not going there. You must guard your heart like you guard your children from wrongful influences. Now we pick up point number two, be slide 18, and we'll do all the rest of the slides here because we haven't, this is new material. Again, there are all sorts of threats and dangers out there lurking for you that will destroy your life, destroy your health, destroy your testimony, destroy your witness. And one of the ways you can protect yourself is by following the Lord's word here in Proverbs to guard your heart. But number two, he says this. Do not allow filthy corruption or inappropriate communication to come from your mouth. Guard your heart. Guard what you allow to influence you. Guard what you are around that you expose yourself to. Have the wisdom to know that, no, I don't want to go there. But number two, be careful what you say. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. The Merriam-Webster's Dictionary says a froward, it means habitually disposed to disobedience and opposition. Synonyms would be a mouth that speaks defiance, disrespect, ill-mannered, impolite, impudent, insolent, rude, disobedient, or headstrong. That is not a compliment to be considered headstrong or ill-mannered. Some people 
seem to joy in that. The words that you say reflect and will then reinforce the conditions of your heart. When you start saying things, it's kind of like a vicious cycle. There's something inside of you that's causing you to say these words, and these words that you're uh, issuing from your mouth, they're, they're having an ill effect on your heart. So it's a vicious cycle. The, the words we say are so important. That is so well illustrated by Peter in Matthew chapter 26 when his words denied Jesus. Matthew 26, verse 69, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee, but he denied before them all, saying words out of his mouth, I know not what thou sayest. This woman says, wait a minute, they just took Jesus in and arrested him. You were with him. He says, not me. Verse 71, and when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man, the words of his mouth. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. The Lord says, don't let that kind of language, cursing, lies, Don't let that come out of your mouth. It creates a vicious cycle. Don't don't even say those words. They will just continue to poison your soul. One writer said, Superficial habits of talk react on the mind so that cynical chatter, fashionable grumbles, flippancy, half-truths, barely meant in the first place, Harden into well-established habits of thought. So, you want to have life. And you want to have health. Guard your heart. Realize there are some things that threaten your heart and stay away from them. They may be people. They may be some form of entertainment. But there's no way you can just live a life and go to whatever concert you want to go to, listen to whatever you want to listen to, view whatever you want to view, without it having a negative impact on you. It will. I started to say, so don't come crying to me because I told you. I told you. Don't do that. You say, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, I'll help you try to pick up the pieces someday because that's where that will always end up. So a loving father says, guard your heart. Number two, watch your speech. And then he gives you another piece of really good advice or counsel. Number three, he says, keep your eyes focused on the Lord, His Word, and His will, and don't look at anything that might cause you to get off course. That's what it means when he says in that same passage, verse number 25, let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. In other words, stay focused on the Lord. Satan is going to put all kinds of distractions out there to get you off course. Looking at the wrong thing can create problems. That's why David said, Psalm 101, 2, I will behave behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Listen to this. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. We need to be careful what we're looking at. 
And the tragedy today is you can, you, you can carry enough filth around in your pocket to sink a battleship in this form right here, right? I mean, there, there's enough sewage can spew out of here in just a short amount of time. You got to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. That's why David said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. First of all, do you know what's wicked and what isn't? That's why you need to be in church faithfully. Reason you need to be in Sunday school. Reason you need to have your own personal time of Bible study every day so that you can learn what is wicked and what is, is not wicked. One writer said, in this matter, let your eyes look right on and your eyelids straight before you. Other men may have their pursuits. This is yours. Stick to it earnestly. In other words, it doesn't matter what your friends are doing. It doesn't matter what your co-workers are doing. It doesn't matter what your family are, are, are doing. They will pay the price for their insolence. They will pay the price for their rebellion. They will pay the price for their ignorance. We don't want you to. And you don't have to. It doesn't get any more practical than this. Guard your heart. Watch your words. And keep your eyes focused on the Lord. And you're doing that tonight, and I commend you for that. And you were probably fought about coming tonight. Probably, some, some folks probably had to debate it, and thankfully you won. We need to get to the point where you don't debate it. It's just a sure thing that Wednesday nights you're in church, Sunday morning you're there for Sunday school, 11 o'clock service and the 1.30 service. Why wouldn't you be there? I mean, I'm up here. you got somebody up here. The, the Lord has somebody up here going to bat for you. And I know it's hard. I mean, Satan battles me. I have to remind myself of these same points. I have to remember to, to guard my heart, to watch my words, and to keep my eyes focused properly. And then we come to number four. Four simple little pieces of advice that can make all the difference in the world. <clears throat> number four, think about the path God wants you to travel. And don't let evil tempt you to get off course. And that's why he says in verse number 26, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You go into bar rooms, you're not removing your feet from evil. You go into the wrong kinds of concerts, you know you are not removing your foot from evil. You go to movies or entertainment that is filled with who knows what, you are not removing your foot from evil. You don't have to be there. That, that's the point. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be there. Remove your foot from evil. It's a trap. You're going to get hurt. You're going to hurt others. Elijah got off course. 1 Kings 19.4 But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He's been doing the Lord's work. The Lord's been blessing him. The Lord gave him a great victory. But when he got a great victory, as is often the case, it stirred up a hornet's nest. To the degree that we in this pulpit, or I in this pulpit, preach the truth of God's word, it's going to help people, but it's going to also stir up a hornet's nest. And Elijah gets frustrated. He gets tired. And he says, I'm ready to die. He complains that he's the only one, and the Lord shows him, no, you're not. And the Lord restored him. So ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. In other words, be committed to the journey. You will have setbacks along the way. 
we do not reach sinless perfection. There are some people that believe that. My mom is probably watching tonight. She grew up down south in the old holiness church. And, though, and the, I've met a, a pastor there of a little country church there where my grandma's buried and my aunt's buried. And they're, they're some of the sweetest, kindest people in the world that you'll ever meet. Very plain. Men won't wear ties, won't wear a watch. You know, very plain. You know, they're, they're, they're not Amish, but not too far from it. I, I suppose, but, but the reason I mention them is they believe that when you get saved, you live sinless perfection. Well, that's, that's just wrong. You, th- th- Paul, th- there's only one that's done that. Thankfully, Jesus Christ. And it's through that that we have salvation because he was sinless. But Paul wasn't able to do that. Peter cursed. Remember? So... That, that's simply not true. So, yeah, it, it still yet, living the challenges of trying to do right and live a godly life is still 10,000 times better than throwing in the towel and just letting Satan have his way with you. There's going to be bumps in, in the road for all of us. There's going to be some times we say, "Why did well, I shouldn't have done that. I wish I hadn't have done that. Or Lord, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I shouldn't have, have, have done that. But you don't get off course. Ponder the path of thy feet. Be committed to the journey. Whether there be disappointments, whether there be hurts, or whether there be struggles. Be committed to the journey. One writer said, it's dangerous to turn either to the left hand or the right hand from the way of God's commandments. On each side of the king's highway are those crooked paths which are full of precipices and pitfalls. So, God's Word says, listen, here's the instructions for life and health. And here they are, real simple, four of them. Now, I'll do my part to do the blessing, God is saying here, but you've got to do your part. You, 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 you've got to make up your mind. You, you've got to, to live this out. And what were they? Number one, guard your heart carefully because this is where your desires and affections originate. No, you cannot do everything. You cannot go everywhere. You cannot be everybody's friend. Guard your heart. Number two, do not allow filthy, corrupt, or inappropriate communication to come from your mouth. Because as we see in Scripture, that just reinforces sin in your life. Number three, keep your eyes focused on the Lord, His Word, and His will. And don't look at anything that might cause you to get off course. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord. Be in your Sunday school class this Sunday. Stay for church Sunday afternoon. Number four, think about the path God wants you to travel and don't let evil tempt you to get off course. You may hit some potholes along the way on your journey. You may have a flat tire occasionally on your journey. We all do. But stay the course. We'll close by quoting Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon said, and I quote, Every wise man will conclude that the best way for a man is is the way which God has made for him. He that made us knows what he made us for, and he knows by what means we may best arrive at that end. And then he says, when you know what he commands, do not hesitate, question, or try to avoid it, but do it. Do it at once. 
do it heartily. Do it cheerfully. Do it to the full. You have no one to blame but yourself. You, you were faithful to be here tonight, and I, I thank God for the opportunity. The most important thing I could do is to get th that passage into your heart tonight. That'll make the difference. Not me, not my personality. That, that isn't going to help you one whit. But if, if this passage from Proverbs is in your heart tonight, it'll change you. It will grow you. It will inspire you. It will help you. It will, it will motivate you. That is the best life. That is the only life. Don't go the way of the weary and the wicked and the wayward who are just being tossed to and fro. Be strong. Be solid. Be salt and light to others. Let's stand, please, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Those are the instructions. Now you go out these doors and live them. Are you going to make some mistakes? We all do. But stay the course. It's not that you aren't. The question isn't whether you're going to make a mistake or not. You will. The question is, will you stay the course after you make a mistake? Stay the course. Be here Sunday morning. Dear Lord, thank you for our time together tonight in your word. Lord, I love these people. And Lord, you love them far more than I do. And through your word tonight, I trust you've spoken to all of us. For some, this may be new. For others, it's a reminder that we have some responsibilities. Lord, we, we have to guard our heart. We have to control our mouth. We have to watch our eyes. We have to make sure our steps are right. And we can. And we should and we must. And with your help, Lord, we will. Help us, Lord, to have taken a step forward in maturity tonight for being here in your house. Be with those, Lord, that are sick, those that are uh, dealing with illnesses. Lord, again, be with Brother Ted and comfort his heart. Be with Jackie there, Lord, and help her to get out soon. Help, help Jim's head to heal quickly. And Lord, others, I, I know I'm missing, but Lord, all these folks, we love them and our hearts and our prayers are with them. Help us to be a witness for you. Help us, Lord, to invite folks to church and help us to live salt and light before others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. Thank you for being here. You're dismissed.